everybody, Echo V here and pre-orders. It's the act of making sure that when a new release video game finally hits store shelves, you're sure to get your very own copy on release date. Or at least that's the general idea of the whole pre-order thing. We'll get to that. Every couple of days, a video game company will release a new game. And because companies like the green stuff, they'll entice players by giving them a pre-order bonus item. Sometimes they're great. And other times, not so much. So let's check them out, shall we? Here we go! As I've said earlier, pre-orders basically guarantee you a copy of a new game, more or less when it's released. So much so that I swear, I hear more about whatever junk for a landfill than whatever the heck they're for. Oh, the new game we're hyping? We know that. But here's some random stuff that you're probably only gonna look at once and never again. As I got more into video games, pre-ordering felt like a necessity back then. These days, however, I honestly don't care anymore. I mean, I get it. Some games are gonna be rarer than others, but let's face it. Most video games are mass-produced. You can find a copy of Fire Emblem Three Houses the moment you enter the store. You're gonna get your chance, trust me. And even then, you kinda have options. Okay, now for the reason why I decided to pursue this topic in the first place. Pokemon. With Scarlet and Violet releasing in November, naturally, pre-orders were already being accepted. Now, as of this video's production, I haven't heard of any pre-order bonuses, but I will talk about some of the pre-order bonuses that I've gotten over the years of being a Pokemon fan. Starting with Auras. I didn't own a 3DS when X and Y came out, nor do I recall there having any, so to Auras we start. For Auras, the pre-orders were figures of Primal Kyogre and Groudon. Nice figures, don't get me wrong, but I really wish Kyogre was a bit angled. Would have made it better in my opinion. Next up is Pokemon Moon, which finally gave up full body figures of both Solgaleo and Lunala. While better, they could have at least given Lunala a stand. I mean, look at this US pre-orders. Then came Ultra Sun and we're back to half figures. Although, I will admit that these are better than the Auras ones. This time the pre-order also came with a shiny Silvala I called, but I didn't care for that so I ultimately gave it away. And this is where we get into a jump because I did have a switch at the time of Let's Go release. Nor would I have pre-ordered anyway since I didn't really care for the game itself. Although these figures were pretty cool, not gonna lie. Next up is Shield, still no switch, so I couldn't pre-order, which is a shame because it had this really cool poster. I know a lot of people don't like posters, but I do, I'm a huge sucker for them. And this design looks really great in my opinion. Next is Shining Pearl, and while I regret buying this game for not living up to my expectations, I do not regret not pre-ordering this game because its bonus was a... tote bag. Look, I know saving the environment is important and all, and we all need to do our part, but really? And if you thought a tote bag was bad, just wait until Legends Arceus and... What was the pre-order bonus you all asked? Huh? Yep! A folding fan! I know, it's fun to talk about how hot it is here in the Philippines, but we're not that desperate, trust me. And it's even worse when the Pokemon started giving a plush as a pre-order bonus. I would have been more than willing to go bankrupt just to get that one. Moving on from Pokemon now, of course, there were some other games that I pre-ordered as well, along with some bonuses. First up, Monster Hunter World, which had a bonus t-shirt, as well as a bonus for early buyers such as a towel, echo bag, plastic folder, and another awesome poster. Unfortunately, I was busy when this game came out, so I couldn't get any freebies, which is so awesome by the way, because they had a poster that I really wanted. I really wanted a poster, man. I mean, like I said before, poster sucker. And for the latest game that I pre-ordered, Rune Factory 5, which had... NOTHING! Seriously, nothing. Well, to the game's credit anyway, at least they had a book inside which functioned as a game guide. I mean, when was the last time video games did this? Oh! Didn't think the word jitters would ever be used for pre-orders? Well, <laughs> boy! Now that you've pre-ordered, you are now in custody of a beautiful baby receipt that serves as your only way to claim the order. And what can happen, you ask, that can make the seemingly simple task so grueling? ANYTHING! Okay, I may be overreacting, to be fair, but still, you could lose it 
accidentally throw it away, smudge the whole thing off, and other unspeakable horrors. I mean, it's basically a ticket to a movie. You lose it, too bad. No admittance. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, go to jail. Just go directly to jail. And then there's... Not all bonuses are good, and if you saw some of the pre-order bonuses that I shared were bad, then oh boy, that folks was just child's play. And after learning about these pre-orders, it could have been way worse. Now aside from the previously mentioned football for Black Flag, man, Edward must have been a huge Cowboys fan. There's the Gears of War 2 RC tank, a really cool pre-order in theory, but do you really trust an RC toy to be good given it's a pre-order bonus? Yeah, didn't think so. So I'm wrestling for Super Street Fighter 4 because what better way to replicate the flashy Mr. Game than with sums? Talk about a Netflix adaptation, am I right? But the worst of these has to be the digital stuff. I mean, I mean, it's a great advantage at first glance, but in the end, it's useless. Especially if it's a basic item like, woohoo, thanks for pre-ordering. Now here's a code that gives you 200 basic potions. They're not even gonna be super. It's basically how to tell the players that they'll suck in your game without actually telling them that they'll suck in your game. And let's not even get into these so-called editions, where one edition has some bonuses, but not all. And even worse is that there's not a single edition out there that has all of them. I mean, what's the point then? And don't even get me started on the one branch only thing. I never really understood that to be honest. Why is it when you pre-order, you can only get it from that specific branch. Come on, most game stores have multiple branches. Is it really that hard to tell the other branches that, hey, some doofus pre-ordered a game from us and, you know, why just have an extra copy just in case they go to you, you know? Just a precaution. Yes, I have no idea how these things work, how can you tell? And that's it for pre-orders. I know it's not part of my usual video style, but I wanted to talk about something else for the time being. You know, something that doesn't involve Pokemon, even though I still did end up talking about Pokemon in this video. Eh, whatever. If you ever had any ridiculous PR experiences, and owned or heard of any bizarre PR bonuses, comment below. Thanks so much for watching. If it's your birthday today, then happy birthday. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone, be good to each other.